In the previous video, we discussed the CMV infection in general, right? So in this video, we are going to focus on congenital CMV infection, right? Where does the mother get this virus? It's mainly through CMV contaminated blood, urine, saliva, and genital secretions. And this list is not exhaustive. Uh, you should watch the previous video where we went into great detail of the CMV infection. And how does the fetus get the CMV? Through transplacental transmission from the infected mother. All right. So here this mother is a pregnant mother we are talking about. Okay. And the risk like is high mostly in the first trimester. Right. Okay, what about the newborn? The newborn will get this CMV mainly during birth or postnatal via breast milk from the infected mother. All right, let's look at uh, clinical features, right? So uh, about 90% of the cases are subclinical, right? They don't show any symptoms. And of this 90%, which is asymptomatic, 10% go on to develop late complications and the most common one is hearing loss. About 10% show symptoms at birth, right? So, and of this 10%, about 70 to 80% go on to develop a late complication, right? And we are going to talk about those complications. Right, so... Uh, let's talk about uh, what will happen if there is a fetal infection. Firstly, there is increased risk of fetal demise, intrauterine growth restrictions, oligohydramnios or polyhydramnios, right? So oligohydramnios is where there is a little amniotic fluid and polyhydramnios if there is uh, more or, or too much. Uh, amni amniotic fluid, right? Uh, and also, there may be uh, placental abnormalities, right? Abnormalities of the placenta. Ultrasonographic signs of CMV infection include uh, periventricular calcifications, hyperechoic foci, that's uh, bowel and liver, and also ascites. Not forgetting hydrops fetalis, right? So this one is mainly uh, generalized edema, right? Uh, and uh, accumulation of fluid in serous cavities. Uh, for example, we're talking about pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, and ascites. There are also non-specific symptoms uh, which are common in other touch infections also, like hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, uh, blueberry muffin rash, hepatosplenomegaly, and etc. Now let's talk about the sequela or consequences of fetal and newborn infection. Central nervous system findings include um, abnormalities on brain imaging like in 70% of those uh, symptomatic infants. Uh, for example, uh, periventricular calcifications, um, hydrocephaly, intraventricular hemorrhage, and microcephaly. Hydrocephalus is mainly, uh, this is accumulation of uh, cerebrospinal fluid due to increased production or uh, decreased or blockage of drainage of this uh, cerebrospinal fluid, right? Uh, and microcephaly, this usually happens because like if there is early infection uh, with the CMV, what will happen is like there will be uh, like destruction of uh, glial cells and other brain cells. So this will lead to decreased volume of brain and then increased uh, uh, size of the ventricles, right? Then the other complication is sensory neural hearing loss. So this happens like in about 30% of the cases. And the other complication is chorioretinitis. Chorioretinitis happens in 10% of the cases, right? 
But we also have our late complications, right? And these late complications include hearing loss, vision impairment, psychomotor retardation, intellectual disabilities, and dental abnormalities, right? So these are dental abnormalities may be serious, like if the infection happens in the first trimester, right? So there are a lot of risk if there is a first trimester infection, right? Let's look at uh, diagnosis, right? So for the fetus and the newborn, uh, we can do CNS imaging, right? And CNS imaging here will show hydrocephalus, uh, periventricular calcifications, and intraventricular hemorrhage, right? So here are some of the images from ultrasound, right? So here you can, this one is a parasagittal section, right? And you can see dilated lateral ventricles with hyperechoic deposit that are compatible with intraventricular hemorrhage. So here, I'm sure you can see here hemorrhage here. And this is another image also. Uh, this one is actually a coronal section, right? Uh, and you can see dilated ventricles with hyperechoic deposits that are compatible with intraventricular hemorrhage, right? So this is shown in green areas. Uh, and if you can see, this arrow is indicating uh, periventricular calcifications, right? Right. So for the newborn and the mother, uh, we can actually detect CMV IgM antibodies in blood, right? And we can also uh, make viral culture, right, uh, or polymerase chain reaction. And in this case, in PCR, we will detect the CMV DNA, right? And the samples are mainly urine and saliva, right? In fetus, we can also do a viral culture or PCR for CMV DNA and the sample here will be amniotic fluid, right? We can also detect the CMV IgM antibodies in fetal blood in this case. Now let's look at treatment, right? So uh, for the fetus, uh, what we can actually do is like if there is severe anemia, we can do intrauterine blood transfusions. If there is thrombocytopenia, we can do platelet transfusions. For the newborn, we can do supportive therapy um, of symptoms. Like here we are talking about uh, uh, electrolyte balance and management of seizures, uh, etc. Right? But we can use gancycloverd. Valgancycloverd and Foscanet, right? We discussed these drugs also um, in the previous video, right? For the pregnant mother, there is only one drug which is approved, right? And the drug is called Valacycloverd, right? So it is the only therapy approved during pregnancy. Now let's talk about a prevention of congenital CMV infection. Right. Firstly, there should be frequent hand washing, uh, especially after contact with bodily uh, secretions of small children, for example, uh, diaper changing. Right. And also we should avoid uh, food sharing with children. And for the most important, avoid kissing small children on the mouth. 